If you've ever seen this flag before in Sea of Thieves, then you'll likely know what the Reaper's Bones Emissary is all about. And as myself and Carbide were bound to find out today, it did involve a lot of stealing, killing, and deceit. Fighting for loot instead of questing for it can actually be quite lucrative. So, as always, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and subscribe. This session began with one simple goal, making a shed load of gold of course, and what better way than taking other players hard earned work. Raising the Reaper's Emissary would allow us to find ships easily, since at Emissary level 5, your ship gains the ability to see any other Emissary on the server, but we didn't have that immediately, so we had to find other crews ourselves for now, and well, as it turned out, that didn't take too long. Someone stole the key. We got a live one. Our first target was doing the Skull of Siren song, so we made a beeline for them thanks to the beacon sticking out of their ship. Now, they weren't too far away, so it only took a little bit of a short sail until, well, after just a brief broadside exchange with them, it was time to board to secure what was obviously rightfully ours. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Bag the other one. Now, sure, that wasn't a particularly crazy fight, but what's important is that it actually gave us quite a bit of Reaper's Emissary progress. And I mean, also, you know, a free skull with 50,000 gold? Of course we take those. If you'd have told me we were going to leave the outpost to grade 1 Reaper and sink someone on a Siren Skull voyage and almost be grade 5, I'd have said you were a liar. With the skull on board, we made our way to deliver it before we could continue reaping. Though, we did notice a ship on the way as we were delivering it, which could mean one of three things. Alright, so there's three scenarios. One, there's no one on that ship and it's a distraction. Two, someone is on that ship, but the other guy is waiting on the island with a keg trap. Option three, the one I don't believe is likely at all. They're weird. With these three scenarios in mind, we made our way. Though, on the way there, I learned about... Secret carbide branded law? Also, I like how you've not commented on my copying someone else's style. <laughs> what, fucking Briggsy? No, I'm Brogsy. Every time I've interacted with another crew wearing this getup, I've just been acting like a Pokemon. The only thing I could do is say my own name. They're just like, hello, can I help you? And I'm just going Brogsy. <laughs> and they just don't know how to handle me, but everyone most, everybody lets me board. It's weird. <laughs> You point at enemy ships and yell, Brogsy. And <laughs> they just, they, under they understand, I guess. You can't capture Brogsy. <laughs> Ultra Ball. <laughs> quick Ball ain't gonna, uh, Quick Ball would probably work. Brogsy's kind of stupid. He has an IQ of like six. After the Brogsy law drop, we arrived at the island. But uh, it turns out it was option three after all. They really were just weird. No one was there on the island. So we decided to sell the skull and to get ready for the next crew. <laughs> Fortunately, the next crew wasn't all that far away. In fact, it was anchored close by, and well, it wasn't exactly long until we had our cannons hailing down on them. Yes, sir. That should have killed me. I think he got regged. Mm. They were okay, only available for a limited time. Yeah, hey, right, right. Here's the thing, right? They've also got a skeleton ship in this as well. Yep, that's right. Even the skeleton galleon was in on this. Talk about an unfair fight. I, ki I kind of want to chain him, but then there's a part of me that says I shouldn't waste it. Yeah, so not using that chain shot ended up costing a bunch of time. See, once they got past our broad, they kind of just started running. Though, I knew it was only a matter of time until we caught up with them. Broxy. I like that idea. I want off this server. <laughs> this is a ramp. They're about to sink. They've sunk. Now that yet another soup is at the ocean floor, our emissary had hit level 5, meaning we now knew where the last emissary on the server was. So we have one emissary at Mercy's Inn Fortress. Missy's End Fortress was still quite some distance off, so we made a quick stop at Reapers to sell what we had before making our way to them. Though by the time we were done, they were already beginning to move. 
By the time we were closer to them, they had just started a shrine, and well, that's when inspiration struck us. Because in a sandbox game, there's only so many times you can keep sinking sloops in the same way over and over in the same session. I'm thinking, see if they react to us going behind Thieves Haven. They don't react, I say, grab a keg, go over to their ship, wait for them to get done with the shrine, float the loot, blow them up, claim the loot, and then their higher grade emissary. What do you think? What did I think? Well, parking in Fierce Haven is kind of a death trap, but such an unaware move that it might actually work. Well, this is the goofiest play of my life. I have never parked in the center of Thieves Haven as a grade 5 reaper. With our ship parked in the center of Thieves Haven, we already had a rowboat, so all that we needed to do now was to find a gunpowder keg, and the plan was ready to go. I don't know, how often does this island spawn kegs? I feel like I don't find kegs here very often. <laughs> yeah, I got grade 5 reapers so I could come here and do Thieves Haven runs. Uh, looks like grade 4 Order of Souls. How often do you see a grade 5 of those? Unfortunately, we weren't able to find any kegs, so we simply had to make do without them, getting on the rowboat ready to make our way to our unsuspecting targets. But, well, as it turned out, we had spent so much time looking for a keg that they were already on the move to the sea fort nearby. No rowboat play this time. Alright, funny idea. One of us goes to the sea fort and see if we can keg them? While not as sneaky as the original plan, we were pretty confident that this would still work given how carefree they were about a reaper vessel being so close to their own. So I hopped into the cannon ready for keg plan number two. Oh no, you're going, you're, you're going. Okay. Goodbye. Just see the one. Instead of blowing up the keg instantly, I decided to take a gamble. See, they were only a grade 4 on their emissary, meaning that if they sunk now, their emissary flag that would float up to the surface would not be worth any or near as much gold as if it was a grade 5. So I simply hid in the crow's nest of the keg, while Cobb, uh, I mean Broxy, <laughs> parked the ship at a nearby shipwreck to reduce suspicion. Yes, yes, chill, chill. It's a uh, friend. It's very good, it's very good. Are they just watching me pull up to the shipwreck? My friend, my friend, Alliance, mm. Alliance. Yeah, these guys had absolutely no idea what was coming. But I mean, we went about to Alliance on Reaper's Emissary after all. With the sea fort complete and the crew harpooning up the loot, they were no longer safe. It was only a matter of time until, well, the keg had to come yeah. into play. Yeah. Excellent. Instantly deliver. With the last emissary on the server wiped out, and after a quick trip to Reaper's hideout, it was time to switch servers. Using the Voyage Diving feature gave us a new server while allowing us to keep all of our supplies. Emissary not too far away from us parked at Lonely Isle. There's another emissary just parked in the middle of the ocean between Shipwreck Bay and Reaper's Hideout. There's another emissary that just raised an ancient spire. I believe they refer to this as a target-rich environment. And on top of that target-rich environment, there was also a skeleton fleet, which at the time had a chest of fortune. First, though, we would need to make our way to the nearest emissary, but well, after a very short broadside, they ran for a little bit, and then I guess they didn't repair because they kind of just sunk themselves? Not that I'm complaining, though, that's one more emissary for us. So we made our way to the skeleton fleet, where our next opponents were waiting. Well, it's going to take them some time to get all that loot out of the water. They won't have, they won't be able to run. So much for not running. You know, I'm starting to see a bit of a trend here. These guys were pretty desperate not to fight, even trying to backboard us to create some distance, but well, that didn't exactly last very long for them. Got him. Throwing blunder bombs, he knows the trick. Yep. You, go, you got him? Shit, Killed him? Now that the sloop was a crewmate down, this allowed Carbide to board. 
See, it turned out that this was actually a solo player, giving time for us to find the chest of fortune. He's jumped off with the coffees in the water. Okay. He's a he's abandoning his. Oh nope. He's he's got the cough floating in the water, but he's got his uh, anchor up. But I have the cough. Thanks, 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 thanks for, for the, the cough. cough. I didn't, I didn't think, think you'd just, just throw, throw it off the, the ship, ship for me. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can go now. With the chest of fortune secured, we knew that this sloop would just keep on running. So instead of wasting yet more time chasing another ship, we made our way to sail once again. It turns out though that that sloop had spent so long running that once we had sold the chest, the game and server merged us to an entirely different server. But well, it turns out this was actually a blessing in disguise though, because it turns out the server we'd been sent to had multiple different emissary ships, and once again another skeleton fleet. This time though, we decided to rush for the skeleton fleet before it could be finished. Though it turned out that we weren't the only ones with our eyes on the chest of fortune prize. I'm losing angle a little bit. But now we're Sorry. getting back, never mind. Okay. Can to give us a bit more speed? Uh yeah, I was about to say we're losing it again. They're passing, passing us up. Fire over. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, they're about to hit the rock. With Carbide now on board their ship and one final few rounds of cannons, the Brigantine had sunk, giving us room to finish the last of the Skeleton Fleet, sinking it and then taking the Chest of Fortune for ourselves. Though that didn't mean the fighting was over. Before we knew it, the Brigantine was back for round two. I didn't understand a word of that. Dude, what if? What if? What mm, if? Yeah. <laughs> Good, because they're waylaying us. Yep, got him. Uh, <laughs> I hurt. Just the fucking bleeds. <laughs> they are now. I see three of them running to him. The hippies. Stop. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I missed it. Boards, I think. Nope. Killed one. I'll help him for a bit. I'm gonna go over. All right. They've harpooned onto us. Oh, so dead. It's so much Bag dead. one. Killed another? Killed another? They're all dead. Kill another? Uh, another sloop's here. It turns out the entire duration of the fleet, a sloop had been watching us nearby waiting to ambush. See, the chest of fortune is quite valuable at a base price of 20,000 gold. No wonder that sloop on the previous server ran. I mean, hell, we were even doing that ourselves. Yeah, just sell it real quick get rid of the Meg and then we'll just take the fight with them on the other side of this open water on Reapers. Okay, good. I know, I'm the best. I'm the greatest helm that's ever lived, don't tell Halo. Well, <laughs> well, don't drop it. Fuck no! It was a trap! Okay, I'm not gonna lie, watching this back, I'm still surprised they pulled this off. See, that sloop never actually intervened earlier because they were busy collecting gunpowder kegs to cover the top of the hideout. They gambled on us, the Reaper ship, coming out on top and going to the Reaper's hideout, where they had one of their crew waiting for us to panic sell the chest. Talk about getting absolutely read like a book. With the chest gone, we even tried to fight them too, and while it was going pretty well for a good chunk of it, even managing to secure a nice death spiral for a while, this crew was actually pretty good at the game, and while what was inevitable, eventually actually came to be. He's boarding. He's on. What can be learned from the Reaper's Bones Emissary? Well, for one, you absolutely can make a shed out of gold, but it can also be a lesson in hubris, in that even when you do become the self-proclaimed final boss of the server, there's always someone out there that's always a bigger fish. Speaking of fish, if you'd like something less PvP oriented and a little bit more chill, why not check out my video on Port Merrick and why it's the best place to fish in Sea of Thieves. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, why not leave a like, comment and subscribe? I also stream the game pretty often at twitch.tv slash Anyways, that's all for now. See ya in the next one.